So we're, uh, we're continuing in the Seven Spirits of God sermon series. To do a little recap, we started out with the introduction and the Spirit of the Lord. Then we did the Spirit of Wisdom and the Spirit of Understanding. And then uh, we did the Spirit of Counsel. And then today we're going to be doing the Spirit of Might. So if you caught on with the worship, a lot of the songs had a mighty theme to them. That's because of doing the Spirit of Might today. And Might is defined as power, strength, or force producing valor, victory, and mighty deeds. The Spirit of Might illustrates and demonstrates the marvelous acts and miraculous powers of the Holy Spirit. When we are weak, God is strong for us. When nobody says something can be done, but there is the Spirit of Might stepping in to bring victory to our deeds. King David, for example, David was just a farm boy, a shepherd, and the spirit of might filled him to where he killed a giant named Goliath with just one stone. And that, and the same for another farm boy in our nerd culture named Luke Skywalker in Star Wars A New Hope. With valor, which is defined as great courage in the face of danger, especially in battle, Luke and his rebel alliance team fought against the Empire. And through mighty deeds, Luke destroyed the Death Star in victory as he let go of all that was around him and put his faith in the force, or like we all know, as the Holy Spirit. It was in those marvelous acts that not only led to the triumphant end of to the Empire, but a, on a spiritual level, bringing Luke as a nobody to a powerful Jedi Knight. Coincidentally, as the Empire was coming to an end, the spirit of might worked behind the scenes to use Luke to bring the, the villainous Darth Vader back to light, to the light side of the force from the dark side that he was in. And with that, a prophecy was foretold in the beginning of the Star Wars saga that Anakin Skywalker would bring balance to the force as he turned evil and turned into Darth Vader. In a later episode of the Ahsoka series, Anakin makes an appearance as a force ghost and helps guides and counsels Ahsoka in the force using both the light and the dark side of the force. Hence the prophecy as he brought balance to the force. And again, notice how the spirit of counsel and might comes into play with that particular series. So where does the spirit of might come in biblically? When I thought of that, I thought of a gentleman named uh, Samson, and starting in Judges 13, again the Israelites did evil in the sight of the, in the eyes of the Lord. So the Lord delivered them into the hands of the Philistines for forty years. A certain man of Zorah named Manoah from the clan of the Danites had a wife who was childless. Unable to give birth, the angel of the Lord appeared to her and said, "You are barren and childless." But you are going to become pregnant and give birth to a son. Now see to it that you drink no wine or other fermented drink, and that you not eat anything unclean. You will become pregnant and have a son whose head is never to be touched by a razor, because the boy is going to be a Nazarite, dedicated to God from the womb. He will take the lead in delivering Israel from the hands of the Philistines. And I'm down to verse 24. The woman gave birth to a boy and named him Samson. He grew in, and the Lord blessed him. And the Spirit of the Lord began to stir him while he was in Manea, Dan, between Zorah and Eshtel. So Samson was blessed and gave strength beyond our means. And in Judges 14, 5, so Samson went down to Timnah together with his father and mother. As they approached the vineyards of Timnah, suddenly a young lion came roaring toward him. The Spirit of the Lord came powerfully upon him, so that he tore the lion apart with his bare hands, as he might have torn a young goat. So later on, Samson finds a wife that his father thinks he hated her. 
but he would rather her, si her sister instead, uh, rather he had married her sister instead, who was more attractive. So his father gave his wife away to one of his friends that was a Philistine. And to get revenge, in Judges 15, He went out and caught 300 foxes and tied them tail to tail in pairs. He then fastened a torch to every pair of tails, lit the torches and let the foxes loose in the, in the standing grain of the Philistines. He burned up the shocks of standing grain together with the vineyards and olive groves. And then because of this, in the, no, because of this, the Philistines bound him with two ropes, and the Spirit of the Lord became powerful on him, and, the, and his ropes on his arms became like charred flax, and binding the, do, the, and the bindings dropped from his hands, finding a fresh jawbone of a donkey, he grabbed it and struck down a thousand of men. And then later on in chapter 16, Samson falls in love with a woman named Delilah, the Philistine leader wanted to know what gave Samson his strength and used her to bring out the truth. But of course, he made a fool of her by telling her lies. And uh, in 16.7, it said, If anyone ties, lies, ties me with seven fresh bowstrings that have not been dried, I'll become as weak as, other, as any other man. And in verse 13, if you weave the seven braids of my head into the fabric on the loom and tighten it with the pen, I'll become as weak as any other man. But those weren't the truth. And she eventually got the truth out of him when he was asleep. She had the Philistines cut off his hair, and sure enough, he woke up without strength and deceived Delilah. The soldiers gouged out his eyes, put him in prison, and they were going to sacrifice him to the guards. However, while he was in prison, his hair grew back. And then during the sacrificial, sacrificial ceremony, or ceremony, he stood between two pillars of the temple, prayed to God for strength one more time, and the spirit of might came upon him, and he pushed the pillars, up, pillars over, collapsing the temple with the rulers and everyone in it, as well as killing himself in the process. So no matter where we go in life, no matter what matter, no matter if we're a shepherd in a field or a nerd at a convention, the Lord tells us not to be afraid and that He will always be our strength. The only fear we should really have is the fear of Him. And I'm always reminded of the verse from Matthew 10, 28, that says, And fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fill him. Fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. And back, going back to uh, before Luke Skywalker became a Jedi, he was what he watched his older mentor Obi Wan Kenobi be struck down by Darth Vader. And before he died, Obi Wan told Vader, "You can't win, Vader. If you strike me down, I shall become more powerful than you can ever possibly imagine." Is because Obi-Wan knew that when he died, he would courageously become a force ghost, a spirit and more powerful than our human bodies that are going to waste away back to earth. He believed with all his heart that we should believe in God's promises and God's word. If it takes just the size of a mustard seed to move mountains, could you imagine what the Lord could do with us if we are filled with the spirit of might? Jesus already gave us control over demons, and so with the spirit of might, no evil can touch us, especially if we have the full armor of God, which is the, the shirt Emmett's wearing today. So I'm going to end here with uh, Ephesians 6.10. Finally, be strong in the Lord, and in his mighty power, put on the full armor of God, so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. 
Therefore, put on the full armor of God, so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground, and after you have done everything to stand, stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the best breastplate of righteousness in place, and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith, with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, and pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the Lord's people. Pray also for me that whenever I speak, words may be given so that I will fiercely make known the mystery of the gospel. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you that you've been here through this service today. We ask that you be with us when we leave here, leave throughout the week, and be with us, uh, give us strength whenever we need it, and to help those others in need. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.